in the 1870s, famous puzzle maker Sam Lloyd offered $1,000 to the first person to solve what has become known as the 1415 puzzle. And according to him, he drove the entire world crazy over it. That ludicrous tales were being told of shopkeepers who neglected to open their stores and pilots wrecking their ships, all trying to solve his puzzle. The puzzle starts with a 4x4 grid of tiles, numbered from 1 to 16, as shown. Remove the 16th tile and swap the 14th and 15th tiles. Now the question is, can you slide the tiles around one by one to get the 14 and 15 tiles to their original places? One of the tools we have in math is invariance where we find a thing, be it a numerical value or otherwise, that is, well, invariant under the different states of our position. For a very simple example, say you are following a chess tournament, where the winner of each game gains a point, and the loser loses a point, and no change to the score in the case of a draw. And the question crosses your mind, is it possible for all the players to finish with a positive score? After a moment of thinking, it seems obvious that no, you can't. But how do you prove that? You can do that using an invariant. The invariant here being the sum of all the points so far, which at the beginning of the tournament is zero. To see that this is an invariant, let's follow the results of the games one by one. When the first game finishes, say, with player one beating player four, here player one will gain a point, while player four will lose a point. And so when summing all the points so far, we get that the point of player 1 cancels that of player 4. And when the next game in the round between players 2 and 3 ends, say with a draw, this too won't change the total sum, as neither player gained or lost any points. All of this is not unique to the first round. For any round, if a game ended decisively, then the point gained by the winner will be balanced by that of the loser, while draws have no effect on the result. Thus, the sum will always be zero. And so, for the question of, can every player have a positive score? The answer is no, for if they did, then the total sum of their scores will be positive and not zero. Now, back to Lloyd and his puzzle. We want to show that there exists some invariant value that doesn't change when we slide tiles around and when calculated for the 14-15 setup, the value will be different to that of the original. To do that, let's look at the possible ways to change the state our puzzle can be in starting from random position, and as a first step in finding such an invariant, we will keep track of how many unordered pairs of tiles there are in our setup. In the example shown, there are 6 unordered pairs, being the pairs of tiles numbered 7 and 6, 8 and 6, and 9 and 6, along with the tiles numbered 12 and 11, 13 and 11, and 14 and 11. We will keep track of the unordered pairs on the left for the time being. Now the moves we can make are moving some tile to the left, right, up, or down. In the case where we make a horizontal move, the order of the numbering doesn't change, but when we make a vertical move, we do get some change in the ordering. In the case of an upward move, the tile moved would change order with the three before it. In our example, that would add three unordered pairs, and that was because the tile moved the tenth tile, changed order with three tiles with lesser value, but there are three other possibilities. We could have had the three tiles having a larger value than 10, in which case the change would have been to correct three of the pairs, and so our counter would have gone down by three, or we could have had two tiles being larger than 10 and one smaller, in which case the change was going to be correcting two pairs and screwing up one pair, and so the total change would be one less unordered pair, so the counter goes down by one, the final case of two smaller valued tiles and one larger tile would result in adding an extra unordered pair, changing the counter by adding one. Thus, the total change in the case of an upward move is by one or three, in the negative or positive directions, and very similarly with a downward move. And so, all the possible changes to the number of unordered pairs is zero in the case of a horizontal move, and one or three in the case of a vertical move. This in its own is not enough to get an invariant. But note how the change was by an odd amount in the case of a vertical move, and so, if we make two vertical moves, 
the change will be even. And here is something about even numbers. If you add an even number to an odd one, you get an odd number. And if you add it to an even one, you get an even number. The evenness or oddness of a number is called the parity of the number. And looking at the parity of our function, we note how it doesn't change for an even number of vertical moves and any number of horizontal ones. And so, if we find a way to account for the odd vertical movements, we will have the parity of the function as an invariant. And one way to do that is to add an odd value for when we make an odd number of vertical moves and an even value otherwise. For example, we can add a counter of the number of vertical moves made. This will make the parity of the function an invariant under any move we make. But such a counter would raise a different problem. What if we're presented with a random position? How would the counter count the number of vertical moves made to reach this position? Our counter can't be used if given the position without the history of how the tiles were moved around. And so, rather than a counter, we will use something that doesn't rely on the history of the board, which is, we will add the number of the row containing the empty spot. That is, if the empty spot is in the first row, we will add 1. If it is in the second row, we will add 2. Similarly for the third and fourth rows. This means if we make an odd number of vertical moves, the change to the sum will be by an odd amount, exactly as we want it. So, to recap, while yes, the value of the function does change, the parity of the function does not. Thus, looking at the correct order, we see that there are no unordered pairs, and the empty spot is in the fourth row, and so our function evaluates to 4, which is an even number, and so whenever we move a tile, our function will stay even. But for the 14-15 setup, we have exactly one unordered pair, the 14 and 15 tiles, and the empty spot is in the fourth row. Hence, the value of our function will be 5, which is an odd value. And so, no matter how much we move the tiles around, the value will stay odd and as such we can't reach the original ordering as it will break the invariant. And so, in the end, Mr. Lloyd got to keep the $1,000 to himself.